What's up explorers? Most people that are familiar with the view to max concept know it as a measure for cardio fitness, but there's often conflicting information as to how to reliably test view to max and which exercise routine is best to improve it. And that's why I sent our explorer in the field to one of the most renowned sports clinics in Germany. Over to him. All right, thanks to the studio. We are here at Charité Berlin to get our blood tested and our VO2 max. We're gonna sweat a lot, but we have to get in undercover because they don't know we're explorers. Let's take all that off and get sweating. The test is called spiroergometry and for it I need to wear this fancy blue mask. It measures the CO2 and oxygen in my breath to calculate my VO2 max. Also a bunch of heart sensors are put on my body to precisely measure my heart rate. Then I need to hit the pedals hard while every 3 minutes the resistance increases and my lactate levels are measured through taking a few drops of blood. Yes, that's what he's doing there at my ear. When I cannot go at it anymore, the test is over and I get to discuss the results with medical doctor Oskar Hoting and sports scientist Lars Clausen. That was pretty exhausting, but he said I'm kind of fit. Let's see what the doctor says. Your VO2 max is uh, 48. Uh, 0.1 milliliters per minute per kilogram of body mass. I um, also got the values of ACSM and looked into the percentiles where you would uh, be ranked. Here I uh, saw you for your age group ranking on the 80th to 85th percentile. That means 80 or 85 percent of the general public in your age group are uh, below your uh, capability or your your VO2 uh, max. Okay. That's very, like, very good news. <laughs> I love good news. In case you're wondering, ACSM stands for American College of Sports Medicine. And in their guidelines to fitness testing, they publish tables to assess your view to max relative to the general population. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check out yourself. Next. Since this whole test was quite expensive, I was inquiring if there's any cheaper, easier alternative test that people can do on their own. And they mentioned something called the Cooper test. The Cooper test would be the easiest way to indirectly determine the VO2 max. Yeah. If you just say 12 minutes, how far can you go? Yeah. Yeah, and then you can basically translate it into a VO2 max. Dr. Kenneth Cooper, widely thought of as the father of aerobics, developed the Cooper method to assess aerobic fitness levels in military personnel by measuring their VO2 max. His research showed a strong relationship between how far one can run or walk and VO2 max, hence spawning this highly coveted testing procedure that still is used today. So, to perform this test, you just need a timer, an even track where you can measure the distance you run and 12 minutes of your time. And then you go as far as you can. So, I'm here at a sports track. I put my timer to 12 minutes on my Apple Watch. I have this amazing chest strap and I'm gonna go and run in the really wet field. So, let's see what the Cooper test will bring. All right, my friends. So, I finished the Cooper test. It was f***ing exhausting. But, I think I made quite a distance. The watch says, let's see, 12 minutes, 8 seconds, 2 kilometers and 0.83. But everything was so wet. Look at this, it's like soaked. So what happened is I slipped a few times. I think the conditions could be more optimal, but still it was pretty fun and dark as you can see. Um, so I probably missed out on a couple of meters that I could have gained. All right, so I just came back from doing the Cooper test and now we're gonna compare it with my lab results. But first we need to obtain the VO2 max from one of the many online tables that are provided. So let's do that together. So this is the website of the Cooper Institute and they recommend, if you scroll down to the bottom of this blog post, this website to calculate the results. And my age 31, I measured in kilometers and I was able to run 2.8 kilometers and I did a 12 minute run and now it should give me the results and yes, so as you can see 
my view to max is supposed to be 51.29 from doing the Cooper test, which shows excellent. I love good news again. 51.29 is actually quite a deviation from what I measured in the lab. It is to say that this lab measurement by now is around about three weeks ago and I have been doing moderate exercise in between but haven't adopted the protocol that they recommended to me. Alright, so we have learned that there's various ways to test your VO2max. From the lab, to fitness trackers, all the way to estimators like the Cooper test. But the question that remains is, how do we actually improve your VO2max? So stay tuned for part 3 of our VO2max series and click this video here. And in the meantime, a little sneak peek. If you are trying to really boost your VO2max, high intensity is the way to go. Um, but, a very big but, 